<laughs> hey, it's the preacher, and I'm going to invite you aboard the bandwagon. I'm getting on the bandwagon, all right? You ready? The bone broth bandwagon. Actually, I've never tried bone broth, but everybody that has tried it is like, oh, you've got to make bone broth. And uh, so I was like, I don't ever really have any bones to make broth out of. And then I saw somebody, maybe Living Traditions Homestead, I don't remember, somebody was mentioned that they had made venison bone broth. And I'm like, well, if you can use bones out of a deer, then I'm all over it. So that's what we're going to do today. Let me show you what I've done. I went and got the big roaster pan out of the church kitchen because it'll hold a lot. I took that last deer that I shot and uh, that's the shoulder blade as you can tell. This is the uh, hind leg and I hit it with a like, a like a hammer and broke it. Broke that one. Broke the front legs. And then I had some of these um, these are beef short ribs and I cut all the meaty stuff off so I just got basically the bone. I never really eat them anyways. I threw them in there. This is the tops off the celery. Now over here, and I roasted the deer meat for like uh, 30 minutes at 400. And that was supposed to make it better. Then I roasted the vegetables for 30 minutes at 400. Onions, they said if you want dark broth, leave the skin on. So I'm all for dark broth. Let me dump that in there. All right, it kind of looks like we're making bone stew, don't it? Hmm. All right, I measured. That's three gallons of water I put in there. And uh, I don't know how big this this roaster is, but I have it set on uh, 250. And I've put it in a place where it's going to be kind of out of the way. And then all I'm going to do is a couple times a day stir it around. Just for clarity and honesty's sake, I've never made this before, so I have no idea if I even like bone broth. I like broth, but, I mean, people that like bone broth, they're like getting a coffee cup walking around sipping just broth. I don't know if I can do that or not, but they say it's good for you. They say it's easy to make. It just takes a while, and all you need is bones and water. So I got that. Well, let's go out in the garden and grab some herbs. Planted those marigolds in the uh, spring with uh, yellow zucchini in between them. The yellow zucchini came and gone. We left the marigolds and here it is November 18th. And would you look at them? Wow. All right, I'm just going to rob the edges of some of this thyme. And I grabbed some uh, rosemary while I was here just to stick. If there's any spiders or bugs in that, it'd just be protein. Now everybody said you need to add vinegar. Some said three tablespoons. Some were like, uh, what was one of them was an eighth of a cup. Some said cider vinegar. Some said regular vinegar. I like cider vinegar. Yeah, that'll probably be enough. They said vinegar helps pull out the nutrients or draw out the, I don't know. I'm just doing what all the internet experts said to do. Everybody said you got to put peppercorns in it, so who am I to argue with internet experts? Some like it hot. Let me see if I can remember everything we'll put in there. Carrots, celery, onions. Some deer bones with a little bit of meat left on them. Some beef rib bones with a little bit of meat left on them. Some rosemary, some thyme, some vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and peppercorns. I'll bring you back in two days and we'll see what it looks like. So, well, it'll be two days for me to figure it out. Y'all will figure it out right now. And we're back. All right, it's been two days since you looked at me. <laughs> uh, we're not going to do Blues Traveler. Okay. Is it Blues Traveler? Yeah. Yeah. No. And Google it real quick. And we're back. All right. It's been two days since you looked at me. No, just kidding. We're not going to do Bare Naked Ladies right now. Let's have a look. Two days. Shake all the steam off. We've left it set at 250. Let's uh, flip the light on and see what we got in here. All right. There's a uh, shoulder bone out of the 
deer. As you can see, all the cartilage is eaten off the end. It's kind of a, yeah, it's almost transparent. You can tell it's really broken down. So, all right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to fish out all the big chunks and set them right here in the sink. There's a strainer in a pot. And uh, I'm going to scoop out as much as I can scoop out. And then once I get as all the big chunks scooped out, then we're going to ladle it through a strainer. And I've got some containers over here. And we should have about two and a half gallons, maybe three of liquid. We started with three. It's evaporated about three quarters of an inch. So we'll see. All right, let me get the big chunks out. <laughs> it looks like a dang archaeological site with all the chunks of bone. <laughs> Man, you can tell everything in there. Just look at this carrot, how thick it is. It's just mush. Even the rib bones of these, uh, the beef rib bones. I mean, I wouldn't say they've completely broken down, but they're, you can tell they've, they've cooked about all they can cook. Yeah. So I've got my uh, six quart. Let me show you this. This is a little six quart container. And then I took my strainer and I used a little, I don't know what them called, binder or something to clip it on there. So what happens is you get this thing about full and then you knock that in there and then you start over again. So I just clip it on there with a binder. Yeah, you're not going to learn that in cooking school. All right. So. There's what we end up with. I'm supposed to separate the fat off here. I'm going to do that a little later. After it cools down, I'm just going to rake the fat off. We ended up with just over two gallons. If you can see here, this is the four quart line. We're just a little over four quarts. Over here, we're probably five quarts. So we're in between two gallons and two and a half gallons, somewhere in there. Million dollar question, guys. What does it taste as like? That's the question. In the spirit of bone broth, I got my 1980s or 90s Flintstone cup from McDonald's. My son actually has a set of these I found for him. He had one and I got him a set. Well, one's still in here, so don't tell him. We're going to put some Flintstone broth in there. That'll give you an idea of color. Kind of looks like a good old glass of sweet tea, don't it? It does have a real satisfying taste to it. I mean, it's it's almost kind of buttery. I think that's the uh, all the cartilage and stuff that's been broken down in there. I know it'll turn to jelly once it cools, but let's put a little salt in it. I didn't add any salt to this because I didn't know. I didn't know how much to add. Oh yeah. Mmm. Liquid deer. That's what that is. That's liquid deer. Mmm. I really like that, y'all. I can see why people would drink this for breakfast kind of as a soup. One of the things I heard people talking about as I was kind of researching how to make this and what to look for, they talked about it being gelatinous, making it jello, a gelatin, because of the bones that were cooking down. That's how jello was originally made, was the cooking of bones. 
and they were like the way it just coats your mouth and man I've got to say it is it's it's uh I say it's kind of like drinking butter it's not real you don't get this real fatty taste it's just smooth what are we going to do from here well I'm going to let it cool down once it cools the fat will come to the top and then once the fat comes to the top and it gets cool I mean it's pretty hot right now you can see the steam coming off of it once it cools to closer to room temperature I'll set it in the fridge and what that will do is that will firm up that fat that's on the top instead of sitting here trying to skim and chase the fat around it'll just get hard and I'll rake it off with a spatula then I'll take what's underneath it I'm gonna put some in uh, one quart Ziploc baggies freezer bags and freeze it I'll put some in in mason jars and uh, freeze it in mason jars and then some of it I'm gonna put in the fridge and use next week we got Thanksgiving coming up I know something is gonna call for broth and when it does I'm gonna use bone broth and we'll see what happens so thanks for coming along all seriousness I think I'd make this again uh, it was kind of it was easy you just kind of set it in the in the roaster and let it go and you end up with a couple gallons um, it has a really good taste uh, what would I do differently I don't really know I you could add a fair amount of salt when you started it I guess uh, you could add salt to it now I think what I'll do is just add a little salt as needed and I think I will some morning, if it gets cold, have a cup of bone broth for breakfast. Or as I like to call it, liquid deer. I know what some of you are thinking, can you taste the deer in it? Actually, I can. It tastes a little bit like deer. So there you have it. If you want to make your own liquid deer, do exactly what I did. You'll love it.